This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Connor O'Gara with us from Saturday down south after another crazy weekend of college football. And it was cupcake week. It was cupcake week. And yet still there were there was an earth shattering upset with Tennessee by South Carolina. So you just never know where these things are going to come from. Connor, did this we uh, cut into did we cut into your uh, World Cup viewing? Uh, you know, I can't say that I'm going to be watching the lads on a Monday afternoon. It's rivalry week. What are, what are we doing? Putting the football <laughs> down for for soccer? No, no, you did not. Thankfully, uh, no. I have been trying to dissect what we saw over the weekend. I call it Cake Week because we feast on cake. We don't feast on cupcakes unless you're a psycho. And I think cake is more enjoyable. And ideally, teams feast during this week. And Tennessee was supposed to feast. But instead, it was, I guess you would say, famine. Well, I need you to help me make sense of what's happening in the SEC right now. It's a weird year because, so I'm mean, just going to assume Georgia goes undefeated, even though who knows what happens in the SEC championship game. Uh, they didn't have the most inspiring game against Kentucky, but a win is a win. Let's just assume Georgia remains undefeated. There will not be a one-loss team in the SEC this year in that case. Vanderbilt is on a legit winning streak after they lost 26 straight league games. A&M, worst team in the Southeastern Conference, one of the worst in Power 5 football. You get to help me make some sense of this, please. Yeah, I really don't fully understand it. Um, there are a lot of things that I think we, we go into a year expecting to happen. And that is Alabama is going to be playing in an SEC championship, or if they're not, they're going to be 11 and one, and they'll still find a way to make the playoff. And Alabama has two losses before the Iron Bowl for the first time since 2010. Brian Kelly takes over an LSU team that had 39 scholarship players in the bowl game, and I, they're they're going to be a little bit all over the place. And oh, so naturally LSU wins the West and is going to be playing Georgia potentially for a chance to make the college football playoff. Uh, And then we have Vandy, Vandy of all teams, that has lost 26 consecutive games in the SEC. Once they lose that game to Mizzou, you're like, all right, let's punt on Vandy winning an SEC game this year. And then all they do is they beat the likes of Will Levis and Anthony Richardson, two guys who could be soon getting drafted in the first round. This year just has gone, gone completely off the rails. And I didn't even bring up the fact that on Saturday night, South Carolina had one of the most out-of-body performances I've ever seen. 63 points from that offense with that quarterback, with Spencer Rattler, and how much he has struggled this year is one of the most baffling results I can remember. And to see Tennessee go down in that way and to, to ruin its playoff chances, it just speaks to the unpredictable nature of this sport. When you look ahead to this week, what matchups are you looking forward to? Is that Michigan running back? Is he is he okay? Did you watch any of that with that Michigan Ohio State game? Well, yeah. Well, so Blake Corum is is questionable for yeah. uh, for Michigan Ohio State after the Illinois game, in which you know that was bizarre. I mean, I I came into that one thinking, okay, Michigan is going to sooner or later kind of quiet the noise. They're going to rack up maybe a victory that shows us. Hey, this is this is kind of we're we're past these these slow starts, and because even against Penn State, a game in which they won convincingly, they were able to you know ultimately win that game by what like twenty four points. And, and against Illinois, Brett Bielema, Brett Bielema, they couldn't really put them away until that late field goal. And if that that kick doesn't go in, we're having a much different conversation about Michigan going into this Ohio State game. But yeah, I mean, it is setting up for a really intriguing Michigan Ohio State matchup. Obviously, uh, to see both of these teams undefeated, playoff spot on the line. I don't think that the loser of this game necessarily has a playoff berth locked up. But yeah, if Blake Corum isn't out there for Michigan, man. I forget about it. I think that Michigan doesn't really have a chance if he's not out there. Then they have to turn the ball over to J.J. McCarthy. What about Arkansas-Mizzou? The way that the Razorback offense looked against Ole Miss, um, K.J. was healthy, he was accurate, offensive line was healthy, opened a lot of room for Rocket, he was patient, defense was opportunistic, and I understand they allowed 700 yards and you know 21 points in the fourth quarter. Game is over by then. Um, Mizzou's got a really good defense, though, and uh, virtually every game they've played this year outside of maybe two has been tight and come down to the very last drive. 
So what would you expect in Friday's game? I, I think we need to see how Arkansas responds early coming off of a game in which – you know, they did exactly what you could have asked for offensively. And KJ went healthy. This offense is at a different level. But how do they respond early on when I, I think that they need to be able to, to get ahead against Mizzou? They need to be able to put them on their heels and play the, the game style that they want. They, they still want to have that run heavy attack. They don't want to all of a sudden be throwing the ball, you know, 30, 35 times. And I, I just think that what we've come to expect from the Arkansas offense is they need all pieces to be right to look functional. And when one of those things isn't there, they totally fall apart. And that can be the the passing game. If KJ has a hurt shoulder or something like that, or they're really limiting what he's able to do. And they have, you know, just a, a, a group that can get kind of that press man coverage on the outside that he struggles with. Or obviously if rocket is, is a little bit banged up or if KJ doesn't have his full mobility, so the Arkansas offense kind of fall apart, but when they have everything right, Man, it's special. And then Arkansas offensive line, we criticized them last week, and they, they looked much, much better in this matchup against an Ole Miss defense that uh, I'm gonna I'm not going to say that they didn't want to be there, but that first half did not look like a group that was all that engaged, and they were not getting off blocks or anything. So I think Arkansas should have success on the ground against a much improved Mizzou defense. And if Rocket is able to, to break home run, home run runs like that, then to me that just kind of takes this game to a different level. You see anybody out there beating Georgia's Ohio State probably got the best chance. Uh, I, I just and what are your thoughts on on the SEC this year as a whole? It, it, we had a lot of a lot of teams kind of fluctuating in and out of the top ten. Do you think it was a successful year for the SEC? Yeah, you know I do, and I think we always define the season for the SEC based on national championships and and all that. I mean the SEC very well could go into conference championship weekend having two teams still alive for the playoff, which, you know, go ask the Big 12 about that or go ask the ACC or the Pac-12 about that. It is just not a given to do that in a given year. Now, I still think that Georgia is going to be able to win the SEC championship and beat LSU, and I think they're heads and shoulders above the rest of college football, and that includes Ohio State. An Ohio State team that I said coming into the year I thought was going to win a national championship. They've been a little bit too herky-jerky for me without Jackson Smith and Jigba out there. But I, I think that Georgia, what it has shown is that they have right now the Alabama ingredients to a dynasty. That's all there with Kirby Smart. And how they handle success week in, week out, to me, is just amazing. It, it really is. It's gotten to that point. I mean, Kirby Smart hasn't lost a regular season game in over two years. Cocktail party in 2020. That was the last regular season loss. It's just incredible to think about with how tough this league is. So, yeah, I, I think Georgia is the best team in the country, and I think with that little bit of extra time to be able to prepare, I, I think that they have the best path to be able to get it done and be the first team to repeat in a decade. Yeah, if they're healthy, I, I, I see them. They haven't had that mess-up game. You're, you're exactly right. When they're supposed to win, they win, and they, they, they don't have that letdown like Tennessee had going to South Carolina. Which shit, that just totally – totally shocked me i mean that game was just baffling in every possible way so that's rather had five passing touchdowns against sec competition all year and in his sec finale he has six i mean it was just unbelievable to watch a south carolina offense that has had very frustrating moments this year with their play callers and the things that they do with jaheem bell and how he's used as a tailback instead of a tight end and these just frustrating things that, that South Carolina fans have seen from Marcus Satterfield, their offensive coordinator, that all of a sudden just went by the wayside in a game against the top five team in which they're a 21-point underdog. It just doesn't happen like that. And it happens so emphatically. You know, it, it was just one of those results that you just can't quite process in the moment. And I didn't have any part of my brain that thought that South Carolina, a team that has been 0-8, in games in which it allowed 28 points under Shane Beamer. There was no part of my brain that thought that that result was possible. And it just goes to show you, any given Saturday, man, anything like that can happen. And South Carolina was certainly ready to go. It's tough. I, when we, Phil and I were talking about this earlier. To win on the road, it's just tough in the SEC. And, and, and we're talking about Coach Bielema, that if he's able to win this, this week at Missouri, that'd be two SEC road wins. And, and I, don't, I don't know that he has two SEC road wins in the same season. Yeah, I mean, to 
to be able to win on the road in this conference, you know, I, I think t- Tennessee got that reminder of, you know, running into a place where there's 80,000 fans and they don't care that they're seven and they're, you know, what, what are they, six and four coming into that game. They're still super engaged. And, you know, Mizzou is going to be fighting for bowl eligibility in that game. And I think while nobody necessarily looks at Mizzou as one of the premier venues in the SEC, it's still going to be a place that on Friday afternoon is going to have a lot of momentum and a lot of mojo, I think, in the air. And can Arkansas kind of battle through that? Because that's been an issue. Yeah, they've gone up to Provo and they've looked really good. Yes. They've had these moments this year in which we thought, okay, they've kind of turned the corner. This is who we thought they were going to be. And then you, you have some of these setbacks, you know, even you know, Mississippi State game, obviously not having KJ out there, but in which you're reminded winning on the road is a great challenge and you have to be able to put pressure on an opposing team from the jump. And that, that's going to be the task for Arkansas is to, to come out, put some pressure on Mizzou with that ground game, keep the momentum rolling with Rocket KJ. You know what I'm looking forward to, Connor? I'm looking forward to LSU wiping the field with an A&M team that just doesn't care right now. And in front of a half-empty stadium that becomes it becomes probably more like three-quarters empty once they get into the fourth quarter and that the 11th, the 12th man changes to a 10th man and everything. And just to continue to see A&M fall into the pit of and the abyss that they have fallen into. And, I mean, LSU's got something to play for, not just, you know, they already won the division, so they have to worry about that. But way to clinch place in the New Year's Six, I feel like they've got something to play for. And, honestly, I don't know what A&M has to play for at all right now, at all. I have no idea. Man, that game, I, I, I'm a sicko, so I watched that game on Saturday against UMass, a 20-3 to rock fight in which 12th man was, Base, 12th man epitomized how many people were at the stadium. I mean, it was like the 12th man. Like, that was the 12th person that was left in that stadium watching that game. And, yeah, the optics <laughs> were just horrible. It was so bad, guys. Like, whatever you think about, about you know, the disappointment that Arkansas has faced this year, at least it's not A&M. To, to, to have a losing streak like oh. this, I mean, seven consecutive, uh, they, they are in such a, a bad place right now. And if they show up, with any sort of a pulse against LSU, maybe it could be somewhat interesting early, but man, this is set up very, very well for LSU to be able to close the door in the regular season and have a playoff path going into the conference championship against Georgia. All right. Last question. It's a Thanksgiving question and we haven't done any of the food talk, you know, but we'll do it with you because we're having a short week here. What's the one thing that somebody would put on your plate that you're going to say, do not put that on my plate because it isn't going to get eaten. I'm not a cranberries guy, and I'm not. I I don't really get the hype. I, I'm not. I'm not one for sweet in the middle of my dinner. And when people do like the the, the sweet potato casserole and it's got the marshmallows on there, I'm like, no, nah. like, no, that's not really what I'm feeling with with this. And I I, I don't know for whatever reason I, I I tend to to stay away from that. That's not getting onto my plate. With all due respect to those who make very good, you know, cranberry dishes, whatever. If you make it, you just plop it out of the can. I guess that's fine too. But no, to me, that that's not making it on the plate, and I'm not eating that unless I absolutely have to. Be careful, be careful, Connor. There's a there's a there's a cranberry crowd that listens here to halftime, and I think you might have just upset all of them. So, hey, are you all right with your food touching on the plate, or do you have to have it? Uh, is is your food not allowed to touch? Some people are are, are different about this. Uh, no, I don't mind if it touches. Uh, okay. If it touches, that's fine. Everything's going to touch the Hawaiian rolls anyways, so um, that that's perfectly fine. That That's the one thing that's getting on my plate no matter what. I, I don't care what party you're at if you don't have Hawaiian rolls. That's not a plug or anything like that. I don't have an advertising deal yet with them, but to me, that's that's got to be the constant, and that's going to touch all the food anyway, so I don't really care about that, no. Connor, appreciate you as always, man. Have a great holiday, and uh, we'll uh, we'll visit with you with you Monday next week. I appreciate it. you guys too. Thanks, Thanks Connor. Connor O'Gara, Saturday down south. A full scouting report on the SEC for this weekend, and a full Thanksgiving scouting report too. Thanksgiving food's the best, man. It, is. it can stay in the refrigerator for three. I mean, you just you just eat on. Oh, Thanksgiving's the best. It's better the day after. It's Friday's so better than Thursday, mm. and then Saturday's better than Friday, and then Sunday. You know, how and you just take a nap here and there. Just ooh, who doesn't like cranberries? Connor people O'Gara. that people that go to sleep with socks on their feet. <laughs> 
Football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B-L-E-A-V. Bet online where the game starts.